Museum of Homelessness is a museum that's uh, quite different in that it's led by people with experience of homelessness. It's a community-led museum and it's a museum that's led by survivors. What we're trying to do with Museum of Homelessness is make uh, an organisation and a space that is on the community's terms and that um, represents homelessness fairly and that makes change and challenges some of the injustices that the community has to face. I've seen uh, I've seen a big change actually. Um, much more money has been pumped into the area. Um, it's, it feel, it's getting a bit gentrified from my liking. Sometimes when areas get like that you miss out on a bit of community, you lose a bit of a community, but there's still a big community here. I'd heard about this going back several years ago when I first became homeless and um, I was fascinated by the fact that it was called Museum of Homelessness. Um, I mean, can you get your head around that? It has its pros and cons. It's good because the, the, the um, area generates money but then um, I find that working class, they get pushed out to different areas. The community were involved in the decision making and around which site the museum would have as, as like a permanent home. And we'd been moving around for a long time, like about seven or eight years in all different kinds of places. Um, and in the time that we were looking for a home as well, we viewed a lot of different sites. When, when we were offered a prison, um, we've been offered sort of basement spaces, shop fronts. But the site that the community really fell in love with was this one. People love it, I think, because it's got a big outdoor space. You know, we're, we're very much outdoor people. Uh, people love it because Finsbury Park means a lot to members of our community. People have slept rough in the park. Um, people are connected to the park in different ways. Reading about it throughout the pandemic, knowing about the, the virgils that were held for those that have passed on that were homeless, having the Museum of Homelessness who was actually trying to gather information about that person so they didn't just pass away with any dignity. Uh, I find that invaluable what they've started. This park has seen so much history that we can relate to, right? It's a site of radicalism. The suffragettes used to rally here. You've got Beacon Books up the road. London Pride organised here back in the early days. It was built to house people, poor Londoners, Londoners uh, who didn't have space in the bigger city. Um, the Victorians really went for it. Talking from my own experience, I know myself, because of the site, means a great deal to me. Because when I first became homeless in the streets of London, I was actually staying here. Um, so it means I, I have an attachment to it from that sense. But also now it's, it, it provides me with an opportunity to, to give back. It's got this history of music, this history of protest, this site of radicalism. It's not a part for one cross-section of society. It's a part for all people, and it's a part for people affected by homelessness. We've got people involved who are currently street homeless, people who have been through the hostel system, people who are squatting, um, people who live on boats, people who are living on buses, and those People from such a range of backgrounds are involved in different ways, like some people are volunteering, some people are in paid roles, some people are trustees, um, and there's a mix of different experiences that come together to make the organisation happen. The park is very, very important to me. I trained uh, for the marathon using this park. The arts club that I do free yoga for, I make a big meal for the, um, the people who use the arts centre, arts club. Unfortunately, it's closed down at the moment, but I'm still doing charity work for them. Um, now, what's wonderful is that MOH is open. There's a lot of discourse and various rhetorics around the notion of ending homelessness and like the policing of the outside and the streets. And yeah, a lot of focus on people dying on the streets. But as like the research of the Dying Homeless Project shows, like a lot of people die in state accommodation. And a lot of people that I know um, have hooked to the streets to look after themselves and their friends and that's not a narrative that's often valued. One of the most powerful things about the work that we do is that no one person's experience of homelessness is the same but what we have in common is that we come together to try and make something better 
and that is what we are creating together on this site. Being involved with others of a similar attitude, similar experience, I can relate to. I can um, talk to some people. I also just end up having to listen, more importantly as well, to others who have experienced similar things that I have. And it helps me because I'm able to just, yeah, lock away my own bad experience with homelessness. I think there's a lot of, um, the funding is not, the, they've lost a lot of funding. A lot of services have been closed down, especially in the pandemic. Lots of places were closed. Um, I've seen more homeless people. I have seen, even, it's, it's, a, it's a contradiction really, because I've seen more money spent uh, in the area and there's more uh, new builds going up and high rise but I've seen a lot more homeless people in the area over the years and people facing drug addiction, alcohol addiction I've seen more on the streets in my little neighbourhood We want to create a space that takes the best of the grassroots movement of the 60s and brings it into the 21st century. To make a site of recovery and healing, it has to be thoughtful and it has to be really um, compassionate in the approach that we have to ourselves and to the site. And I think that that change of pace has been a really beautiful thing that we've been able to explore together here. It's not affordable. The house is like half a million and plus for a little flat. My schoolhood friend lived in that Woodbury Downs estate, but now she's had to move all the way to Ponder's End, which all her community, her friends, around Findry Park. She grew up in Findry Park, she knows Findry Park, but she just couldn't afford to stay, and they've put her in an area that she doesn't particularly like or know. We're not the Museum of Homeless People, so we don't, we're not an obvious fit for what you would expect of a museum. You don't come and see um, cardboard signs in display cases. There is that kind of feel in the museum from the people who were involved in the earlier days and still involved. People wanting to challenge power and not do it in an obvious way. Like when we decided to make exhibitions, we kind of set them up with the idea that we'd have the display cases and the labels. And everyone involved said, no way, you can't do that. You can't have static exhibitions with labels because people who are homeless have been labeled their entire lives. So we set up a, a very different sort of uh, museum experience for people, which is very interactive, very um, immersive and, and um, very much about connection. I think there's a lot of political potential in, in that, in terms of how you like, authentically build communities and, and, and bring people together. Learning ways to be together, look after each other um, and live in a, and exist together as well. I think it's really important to really think about what solidarity means because we have you know people with experience of homelessness deciding what the museum does it's, it's taken us down some interesting uh, roads so we'll do things like direct action support people on the streets quite a lot of campaigning and investigations and um, there's a myth that museums are neutral we don't believe in that and we do take a particular stance on matters of injustice that have affected the community. The new people of Finjury Park, um, the old community, they all came together to get their hands dirty and build, um, plant bulbs. And I, I saw that myself firsthand, so that was nice to see the young, old, um, working class, all different uh, socio-economic groups coming together and just helping out. Our objects aren't kept behind glass, they are accessible and they're, you know, they're alive with the stories that they have, that we share with people. And so the Museum of Homelessness is really reimagining what a museum can be. I think we get our strength from our grassroots setup and collect and working together. Um, you know, we don't have huge backers and, and groups like ours, like the Museum of Homelessness and other groups we work with, you know, we have to kind of struggle to survive a little bit. I think from the very early days, we were set up to be outspoken. Like we were set up in the tradition of um, of a grassroots move, you know, in the tradition of the grassroots movement. We were inspired by things like the old speak outs of the 90s, where decision powers were pulled in front of groups of people affected by homelessness and made to be accountable. I couldn't visualize us a museum in the middle of the park and how 
it was going to benefit the local people. What, I thought, what are they doing? But now they've got um, sessions here. You can you go along. You've got singing sessions. You've got yoga sessions. You've got um, creative art sessions. So it's really good. Most of the issues come when people don't understand each other. When you get fear comes in and people are making decisions based upon fear, based upon m misperceptions of other people, um, that's where we see issues. So the more connection we can have and that feeling that people get of being together is so much more powerful in an educational sense than any other way of trying to explain what homelessness is and, and who our community is. When people come on site and they feel that amazing energy and the creativity and the talent and the resourcefulness, that's when the magic happens. It's not around pity, it's not around viewing ourselves or other people as victims in oppressive structures, but celebrating our existences and defiances and acknowledging how difficult some things are, but not defining ourselves within those oppressive structures. I'm worried that it's going to lose its little bit of edge. There's little calves down Finji Park, you can go and have a cup of tea and there's a roll and it was cheap. Now there's other, um, you go to girls and they're like, a, a, a roll is like four pounds, three pound fifty. It's not feasible for the local people. The really beautiful potential of having this site is that we've got um, a canvas to explore sustaining some of that vigour and creativity that lives amongst us and the different communities that we're connected to. And it's really nice to have a canvas and a base to sort of let that trampoline off. Working physically in the garden, uh, I just I, I just find it so uh, soothing, relaxing. Uh, I'm helping create something that has uh, a legacy with it. Um, and I think I could speak for others who, as well who I've met, feel the same way. I think Museum of Homelessness, I think it's a great concept and I love it. There's never been a museum in a park before like this. I guess the history we're going to make is to be written at the moment, which is quite exciting.